This is the new Porsche 911, and I want to show you some things that are very controversial about it. I'm not even talking about the hybrid system. So look, gone is the old paddle starter, and now you have a normal starter button like every other blooming car. And they've got rid of the analog rev counter. You now have this digital one. Though, do you know what? It's not all bad because by twiddling this button, I can change it to a different look. Have a look at this. You can now have it like a classic Porsche racing car with the rev counter and red line towards the top. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this new 911. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior. Why? Why now? The interior. <laughs> I'm gonna try and explain its technology and how it all works with the help of some VR. I'm also going to compare the performance of the new GTS around a track compared to the old GTS with the help of a Porsche racing driver. That wasn't your finest work there, was it? And of course, I'm going to launch a new car to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of this facelifted Porsche 911, the 992.2 generation. Now, there's one big change. Can you tell what it is? I'm going to give you a clue. Wait there. So... Can you tell what it is? Yeah? Now, the indicators are integrated into the headlights. So that's allowed them to redesign the bumper. Now on this GTS model, you get some more changes as well. You get these fins here at the front, which can open and close depending on whether the brakes or the engine need more cooling or not. I'm not a fan of these really. I prefer the look of the front of the old GTS, but you tell me what you think. Moving down the side, we have new alloy wheel designs on the Carrera. You get 19s at the front, 20s at the rear here on the GTS. You have 20s at the front and 21s at the rear and the GTS gets center locking nuts like on the gt3 rs no major changes apart from t hybrid it's a big thing we'll get onto that in a moment then moving around the back you have a new rear bumper design and a new rear diffuser and on the gts loving this centrally mounted exhaust pipes they look cool i much prefer those than the old kind of wider exhaust pipes they're like on a gt car aren't they you also get a new location for the number plate it's a bit higher up than before redesigned rear light bar and these fins on the back are slightly different than on the 992.1 generation. I'm liking the look of the back more than the old car, but I like the look of the front of the old car more than the new one. Here on the inside, the biggest change of this facelifted 911 is what I've shown you already, the fully digital driver's display here. So now what they've done is made sure that all the DARs can be viewed from within the steering wheel, unlike on the pre-facelift car where some of them were blocked by the steering wheel. So that is good actually. And you've got different views you can scroll through. Look at that, there we go. And there's that other new one that I showed you there, which is like the classic Porsche. I do like that. All models now come with the drive select mode, even the entry level Carrera. And the GTS obviously has some upgrades so you get alcantara effect race text on the steering wheel here on the doors here as well and down here also you get it here on the seats you can of course upgrade the seats to racing style buckets and the gts also comes with the sport chrono as standard and you can choose whether you want it in black or red and if you have it on red then your digital tachometer is in red as well oh another thing the gts gets is common fiber inserts here here and up here let's make it feel more expensive Porsche launching this new facelifted 911 as this GTS and the entry-level Carrera. Now, there's not so much change on that car in terms of the performance. You have the same three litre flat six twin turbo. However, they're giving that car the turbochargers from the old GTS because they're slightly larger. This isn't a massive uptick in power though. Now gets 394 horsepower, which is nine horsepower more than before. Their torque remains the same, 450 newton meters. What's really interesting though is this car. It's got a completely new engine. It's a 3.6 litre flat six engine. It's got a wider bore and a longer stroke than the engine in the old GTS. And it's also just got one single turbocharger, but it's electrified. And what it can do is instantly spool up to reduce turbo lag, but it can also recoup energy, put it into a 4 100 volt battery which is fast discharge battery which can then be used to power an e-motor that is in the eight-speed pdk dual clutch automatic gearbox the result is that this car has 541 horsepower which is 61 horsepower more than the old 911 gts and it has 570 newton meters of torque which is 40 newton meters more than the old car problem is all that kind of technology the hybrid stuff does add weight so this car weighs in at 1595 kilos for the rear wheel drive version which is 50 kilos heavier than the old gts 
GTS. When you go for the four GTS, you can add an extra 50 kilograms for that four wheel drive system. So what does all this mean in terms of performance? Let's find out. Now let's see how quick this car is from naught to 60 miles an hour. Porsche says this Carrera four GTS will take three seconds. It's a reality, I've got my specialist timing gear here. Track is a bit damp. Here we go, launch. Some wheel spin there. Porsche don't care. <laughs> 2.96. Now I have already experienced just how much quicker the new GTS is compared to the old one in a drag race over the standing quarter mile when I raced one with the help of ex Formula One driver Mark Webber. Now if you want to see that video just click on the pop out banner appearing in the top right hand corner of the screen or follow the QR code on the screen now. But the question is what is the difference between the two cars if you put some corners into the equation? So to compare the new GTS against the old one on track I need the help of another racing driver. Right, I'm in the car with Jörg Bergmeister. It's a little bit damp, but you've got the skills, right? I hope so. It sounds quick, doesn't it, his name? Jörg Bergmeister. But what does it mean when you translate it in German? Mountain master. <laughs> Mountain master. <laughs> you had to be a racing driver, didn't you? We're going to do a launch start and we'll see what the difference is. Typical, you come to Spain and the track is slightly damp, you know, we weren't expecting rain, but here we are. Oh, I've got to say, this is impressive. So I think the new car's going to have to go some to be able to beat this, but we shall see. Now this is tight here because we're doing a section of the circuit. Oh, Whoa! <laughs> I think we've got the common ceramics on this car. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, that was beautiful through there, my friend. Here we go. We're going to get a time now. What have we got? 1.19.93. You happy with that? Yep. Okay, good. We need to point some things out, right? This is the four-wheel drive. The old car was two-wheel drive. Only one we had here, so tire-wise, on the new model, I think we put a bit more emphasis on dry handling, as it's wet now. <laughs> okay. That shouldn't help too much, at least. Right, so you think that's going to help even things up and the weight, yeah. but then you've got the added traction from the front axle. We are making some excuses here, but um, <laughs> let's find out what the result is. Okay. <laughs> Engage the gear. Helps. Even the pros can <laughs> f it up. <laughs> Look at that. Good morning. <laughs> right, that's definitely quick off the line. Ah, uh, no. lead. Whoa. The punch definitely out the corners, the initial drive. Obviously, it's benefiting from the power going to the front, but you can feel the engine. Yeah, it's definitely stronger. That wasn't your finest work there, was it? <laughs> Is that working? Oh, damn it! <laughs> okay, well... That's quite handy because you cock that corner up a little bit. Yeah, and on the start I shifted too late. You shifted too late! <laughs> the Porsche gods controlled that, you know. <laughs> Old Ferdinand up there was like, <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> gonna do we're coming around now that was quicker is it quicker there we go 118.53 that's quite a bit quicker really don't you think yeah. what proportion of that you put down to the four-wheel drive system three four tenths at least a second is down to yeah. the engine performance yeah i would say so wow so the new car is quicker than the old one but let's find out exactly how it is quicker and let's do that as quickly as possible 
The new 911 GTS's hybrid system is all very complex. And so to explain it to you exactly how it works, I've got Matthias Hofstetter. So he's the director of powertrain at Porsche. What we're going to do is make it a bit of a challenge. And that's why we're wearing these special VR headsets. I'm going to get Matthias to try and explain how the system works in the same time Jörg took to go around the lap. So one minute, 18 seconds. And we'll see if you're as quick at explaining as Jörg is at driving. Here we have a virtual version of the new GTS in front of us. Now, this hybrid system, it reduces emissions compared to the old car, but it's not just about that, is it? So emissions is, of course, less, but we have much more power in the car with our new hybrid system. Okay, then, so let's remove the bodywork so we can yes. see all the components. I'm going to count you in. Ready? I'm going to time you. You've got one minute, 18 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Okay, in the front, you see our high-voltage battery. It has 400 volt and 216 single cells inside and we have a capacity for 1.9 kilowatt hours. And then you see the orange cable who goes through the car past the gearbox. In the, into the gearbox is the electrical machine and here you see all the electrical control units, components and uh, DCD co converter. Then you have the engine. New, complete new development engine, 3.6 liter, uh, six cylinder boxer. And on the right side, you see a single turbocharger. And this is our hero, is the name giver, is the name giver of the T-Hybrid. And you see this turbocharger has also an electrical machine between the compressor and the turbine. And with this machine, we can also, when we boost it with 20 kilowatt, the, 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 the speed rise up very, very fast. And at the same time, we can, we can break, we can break the, 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 the shaft. And so with this braking, uh, energy we can recuperate to refill the battery or to put all the, the all the, the power into our electrical machine and so we get much more power for this whole car. Do you know what you did it quicker than Jörg did a lap time so well done basically it somehow makes the car more efficient and yet more powerful. As you can see, Porsche is very keen to talk about how the hybrid system is all about performance. But the reality is new emissions regulations mean that they can no longer call the catalytic converters by running the engine rich. So now they use the electric turbo to slow down the hot exhaust gases and recoup this energy as electricity and use it for more performance. It's clever. However, what's clever and has always been clever about the 911 is that it's always been the practical sports car. Here in the front, you have decent door bins for a sports car. Look, you can even squeeze a large bottle in there like that. Cup holder here on the center console. There is another one. Look, if you go all the way over there for the passenger, the glove box is a reasonable size. That one's full of stuff. There's not much space under the armrest. That's where you keep your mobile phone. More on that in a bit. But the great thing about the 911 has always been the fact that it has some occasional rear seats. As standard, the car comes just as a two-seater. You have to select that you want the rear seats. It's a no-cost option, but there is a chance you might forget to do that, and then you might regret it. Actually, I'm regretting this. I think this is smaller in the back than my old 996. You can fit children back here, and there's eyes to fix just there. Can you see that eyes fixed anchor points? So you're not going to be able to fit a bulky rear facing seat here in the back, just booster seats. Here in the front though, look, there is eyes fix on the front passenger seat there. Can I even travel in the back of this car? Ah, can you get in the front and see, see if I've just got the seat? Oh, there we go. See if you could sit and drive now. Yeah, I guess it's fine. I'm not so sure that I'm fine. I'm having to go side saddle and it's not good. I mean, where, what am I supposed to do my legs? Huh. Want to sell your car quickly, easily, and for a fair price? Then head to CarWow to have over 4,000 trusted dealers ready to bid on it in an online auction. First, enter your car's registration to get an instant approximate valuation. Then, if you want to proceed, give us some more details and upload some photos, and we'll help you set a fair reserve price for your car. That's the minimum amount you'd be happy to sell it for. Once you've done that, we'll enter your car into an online auction. When the auction's over, we'll let you know the result, and the dealer with the winning bid will be in touch to arrange easy payment and free collection of your car. 93% of sellers surveyed said they got the price they expected, or more, through CarWow. The best bit is, it's completely free! I put a link in the description of this video and the pinned comment to take you directly to CarWow, where over 4,000 dealers are ready to bid on your car. Or you can just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen now.
Alternatively, just Google Help Me Car Wow and we will help you sell your car quickly, easily and for a fair price. On with the video. Believe it or not, I think I'd be happier travelling in the front boot of this car because it really is quite useful, this fruit on the 911. Still, overall, I don't think that the 911 is as practical as the new Mercedes-AMG GT. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, follow the QR code appearing on the screen now. Alternatively, click on the pop-out banner up there. Anyway, that brings me up to five annoying things about this car. As we saw earlier, sometimes there can be confusion with the lap timer function on this car. That if it's doing it via GPS and then you try and stop or start it using the button there or on the steering wheel, it gets a bit confused and doesn't stop your lap. To be fair on Porsche, they got straight onto the phone to head office and decided to look into that. Maybe in future, they'll fix that. All these sensors here for the safety systems and active cruise control just look hideous. I'm sure Porsche could have covered them up a bit or integrated them better. Also, this is the first time ever in my entire life I've ever been able to find a fake vent on a Porsche. Look, is that supposed to be a vent? It's just, why? Why now? You used to be able to get the GTS version of the 911 as a manual. Not anymore, you can't. Because of the hybrid system, it is only available as an auto. The hybrid tech does not come for cheap. You see, this new GTS costs from £133,000, which is almost £11,000 more than the old car. If you want the four-wheel drive version like this, it's almost £140,000. And that's before options. The car's hybrid system emits a high pitch whining sound under certain circumstances. Now, I actually can't hear it. You see, as you get older, your sense of hearing drops off. You can't hear such high frequencies, but Adam, who's under 30, can hear it. Now, it appears that it only happens when the car is sort of coasting and you apply a bit of throttle, and the throttle isn't being used to actually power the car forward because it doesn't need it, but instead it's putting energy into the battery. When that line goes green and I'm actually accelerating, there, yeah, you can. So odd, doesn't matter probably for most Porsche buyers because you're gonna be like over 40 anyway and you won't be able to hear it, but younger people can. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. There's a new axle list system available as a 2,000 pound option. It's not fitted to my car, but this Cabriolet has it and you can raise and lower the nose much quicker than the axle list system you got on the old 911. Watch this, up down. So these little vents here, those are special cooling vents for your mobile phone. So when you're wirelessly charging it and it gets a little bit hot, it'll actually blow cold air over the back of your phone so it doesn't overheat. Now, if you spec the carbon ceramic brakes on the GTS, you get the ones from the Turbo S, which means one, two, three, four, five, then five on the other side, 10 piston calipers at the front, gripping a 420 millimeter disc, and then four piston calipers at the back with a 410 millimeter disc. Also, what's really good about the GTS, regardless of whether you go for the carbon ceramics, which by the way, cost 9,000 pounds, is that there's no brake blending. So you don't have any regen braking at all on the brake pedal. You do have some recuperation to the motor in the gearbox when you lift off the throttle, but the advantage of not having it through the brake pedal means that the brakes feel perfectly natural, like you want from a 911. Adaptive dampers are standard and the GTS sits 10 millimeters low to the ground in the standard career with stiffer springs and retuned dampers and anti-roll bars. Plus it gets Porsche torque vectoring, so a continuously variable limited slip differential on the rear axle, plus rear axle steering, so it'll turn the rear wheels in the same directions as the front at high speeds to make the car feel more agile and stable, but it also turns them in the opposite direction at low speeds to make the car more maneuverable. Now you're gonna be able to order the new GTS with Porsche's dynamic chassis control, and that's basically active anti-roll bars that can alter the stiffness of the anti-roll bar mid-corner to improve the handling and keep the car nice and flat through the bends, and it uses that high voltage battery from the hybrid system to power the anti-roll bars so that they can respond like that. You can get new HD matrix headlamps as an option and they have 32,000 individual pixels so they can like blank out their beam really accurately so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers and they can even project the actual outline of the car on the road ahead of you so you know exactly whether you're going to fit through a gap or not. And the best bit about them, they can illuminate the road up to 600 meters ahead of you. I want them. Let's have a listen to the cold start on this new T-hybrid engine. Sounds pretty good. A few revs. I wonder how that compares to the normal base Carrera. Yeah. 
yeah, I definitely prefer the sound of the warm-up on this engine. All right, let's have a little blast of this car on track myself. Obviously not gonna be as quick as old Jörg, but it's worth like giving it a go. Oh, I mean, you really notice that, the throttle response that you have from this car, it's so good. It's very much like a naturally aspirated car, but with more torque. You don't have quite the pure throttle response of an NA car, but it's not far off. It really is just next to no turbo lag. It's amazing what they've done. I love the way they've done it like, it's about emissions, sort of, kind of. Uh, no, it's not, it's about performance. And someone like me really isn't noticing the weight penalty of this. You know, for that extra power, that 50 kilos is, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> and it loves to rev. Red line at seven and a half and it rips out. Tell you what, this new anti-roll system certainly does a job. Keeps the car super flat, makes it just more predictable when it starts to slide. And these brakes, carbon ceramics, which are now graded from the Turbo S, just so much stopping power, which you need because you've got all of that extra performance. The only thing that I really want to know is what the heck are they going to do with the Turbo S? It's just going to be madness. The truth is that actually very few people will drive their cars on track. And you could say the new GTS is almost too fast for the road. When you get on a twisty road, obviously you can't push it like you can on a track. Look there, the speed camera warning sign. And the phone road is no more. No, I mean, Sports Plus, and actually the way this is going over those rumble strips is pretty impressive. The speed limit has increased now. This is the benefit of this engine, watch this. So I'm just like, cruising, this is third, let's go into fourth. 2,000 RPM, watch the speed climb. Look at that, it's on it straight away. I'm not sure about the noise. I mean, I like the noise, but I've got a sneaky suspicion that some of it is augmented and being played through the speakers. You know what, after you've been on track and then you're out on normal roads, I sort of feel like the cost potential is totally wasted. To really feel the benefit, you have to be going substantially over the speed limit, which is just not acceptable. I had my phone on track. I'm just gonna go to automatic, whack it into normal, reset the trip computer, and we'll see what the economy is on this car. Oh, by the way, look here, you can see the power distribution from the electric turbocharger to the battery, from the electric turbocharger into the motor, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what all of that stuff does for the economy. Well, I'm just cruising about. This is a good opportunity to evaluate the car's comfort levels. So there is a bit of wind noise coming from this pillar and the door mirror. The tyre noise isn't as bad as I remember. I don't know whether it's new tyres or what, or maybe it's just I'm used to my GT3 RS, which has far less soundproofing, and that's quite noisy. One of the great things about the Porsche 911 has always been its everyday usability. Despite all the upgrades, oh, oh. those adaptive dampers do a great job of not only keeping the car feeling nice and sporty and flat in the bends, but dealing with bumps. I mean, it's no like luxury limousine, the way it goes over bumps, but it's still pretty impressive. Look, these are the most awful and abrupt speed humps and not too much of an issue. It's reasonably maneuverable. Why do I feel like I've gone the wrong way? Uh, let's just keep going. Uh, right. Definitely need to turn around. Uh, can we make it round? We've got rear axle steering as standard on this car. Oh, oh no, I've got myself into a right pickle. Thankfully, we get a reversing camera as standard. Believe it or not, my 911 GT3 RS, I had to pay extra for a blooming reversing camera. Thankfully, the steering isn't overly heavy and we've got front cameras. This is what I don't have on my car. It doesn't have like the all round view cameras. You can't even get it. I really wish it had them because the dash is quite high in this 990 generation of 911. So you don't get quite the sense of where the very end of the car is like you do in the older 911s. Well, you don't if you want to sit nice and low. You can jack your seat up, then you can see, but who wants to drive a 911 like that? You need to be like slammed with your ass on the deck, don't you? To be fair, like for a car with this amount of performance and what it's like to drive, the turning circle of 10.9 with the rear axle steering is so, so good. Let's see if I did make an error. Whoopsie. I think I've illustrated that while the car can cope with tan driving nice and easily, its driver sometimes can't. Actually, I should give a mention to the car's gearbox for how well it just like blends the gears together. So seamless and smooth. The only thing that's disturbing me is a speed limit warning sign chirping on. 
that's interesting. Coming out of those roundabouts, I'm not gonna say it's as crisp as a natural aspirated engine, it's not. The gap that you get with like turbo lag is just almost eliminated. Not entirely, you can, just a little bit, but it's like, uh, and it's on. That uh, is the lag and the air uh, is on it. There we go, Porsche. Using hybrids in the right way. Now we don't have axle lift fit to this car. I wanna pull into the gas station. Am I gonna regret it? Should you have axle lift? It made it. I actually thought it wouldn't make that. That's why I went and tested it. A few moments later. I just realized I have to go down the slope to get out and it's a different exit and this looks worse. Is going down going to be a bad thing? Eh. Eh. I think we're safe. What was that like? That was extremely close on this lip here. Get yourself the axle lift for sure, right? You're just gonna have to get it. Right, let's see the trick computer. We've done 76.9 kilometers, average of 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers. 30.37 miles to the gallon from a car with 541 horsepower that can go from 0 to 60 in just under three seconds, as we've seen today. Hybrid for the win, I and mean, it's not even a plug-in hybrid. So then what's my final verdict on the new Porsche 911? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? I reckon you should avoid the 911. It's rubbish. Porsche have messed it up. I am of course joking. Yes, this is still the best all-round sports car you can buy and if you can you should just go right ahead and buy the new 911 but which one should you buy well in the past i'd always recommend either just get the carrera the entry level car because it's all the sports car you really ever need or get the whole hog and get a turbo s or if you can a gt car i never really rated the gts even though actually most buyers saw it as a sweet spot in the range now though i think this new hybrid turbocharger and the 3.6 engine set the gt apart and make it worth the premium over the other models and so if you're looking for a 911 i'd say get the gts it really is the sweet spot in the range anyway i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a like if you want to watch some other videos click on the video windows and if you want to sell your car the easy way and have dealers all across the country bid on it click on the car wow logo thanks for watching